Hi, I'm Lopke. I'm a recorder player and a singer specialized in early music. And today we're going to talk about vibrato in Baroque music. So today we're going to talk about a subject that's not a very easy one. So I'm going to use some notes here. <laughs> Before we're going to get into the practical issue, really the main question is to vibrate or not to vibrate in Baroque music? That's the question. So I based my video of today on a couple of articles on the subject as well as the video by early music sources on vocal vibrato here on YouTube. So look that up, that's a very interesting video. The term vibrato was actually only used from the 19th century on and uh, before that the descriptions were actually quite diverse and vague. So it's not easy to come to conclusions about vibrato in early music. Even so, the earlier sources make it clear that ornament wasn't a continuous sound quality, but rather an ornament. So we're first going to look at vocal vibrato because the voice in early music always has been a point of reference for instruments. They would imitate the voice in many occasions. For example, this is what Geminiani says. The art of playing the violin consists in giving that instrument a tone that shall in a manner rival the most perfect human voice. So if we go to the sources on vocal vibrato, there are sources that speak of um, vocal undulations, modulations, vibrations as something intrinsic to singing. But vocal vibrato increased uh, when large opera houses required singers to be heard over an increasingly louder orchestra. And this is very interesting because he says even the pro vibrato Carl Seacher advocated in 1936 a reduction of modern singers' vibratos from a half step to a quarter step. So that means from to a much lighter uh, vibrato. And we're talking about someone who advocated vibrato. Anyway, his advice was not generally applied. Is it possible that in the Baroque, the natural vocal vibrato was primarily produced as an intensity or loudness vibrato, while the ornamental vibrato was a pitch vibrato? Something very interesting. He gives an example from the year 1695, so really early, um, which is Roger North from his Notes of Me, and this early example shows the difference between an intensity vibrato, a, a waved vibrato, and a clear pitch vibrato as an ornamental uh, vibrato on a long note. So this waved vibrato of the voice was actually so much smaller than uh, what is used in modern string instruments and uh, wind instruments. So that's very good to know. And for me personally, it also makes sense from the point of view that um, Baroque music is um, just coming after a lot of polyphonic music, um, where intervals have to be pure and lines are very horizontal. Okay, so now we're going to the instruments. Let's start with uh, the strings. There are actually two uh, historical treatises for strings. One of them is Leopold Mozart of 1756. And it's very interesting because he says, it would be a mistake to play every note with a tremolo, and that's his word for vibrato. He says, there are already players who use vibrato, tremolo, consistently on every note as if they have the palsy. And this is very interesting because it means that in his time, there were people already playing with a continuous vibrato, but it wasn't seen as something elegant and it doesn't seem to be the norm because he clearly says there are already some people. But with treatises you always have to consider the context. Where, where is this coming from? So when we're going to Geminiani, Francesco Geminiani, in Arts of Playing on the Violin 
of 1751, so it's only a couple of years earlier, he takes it from the context of vibrato as an ornament on a long note. So he actually says vibrato should be used as much as possible. But again, we have to be very careful. What is the context? From which point of view are they saying what they're saying? Okay, so it seems we have two kinds of vibrato, a vibrato of pitch and a vibrato of dynamics, intensity. There is another book I would like to mention. It's by Greta Moens Hanen and it's called Das Vibrato in der Musik des Barocks. Vibrato in Baroque music, very good book. She comes to four conclusions. One, intentional vibrato was a type of ornament narrower than a half step in width and used for expression. Two, various types of ornamental vibrato existed with many ways of producing it. Three, and this is an important one, a continuous instrumental vibrato was not deemed acceptable. And four, a natural vocal vibrato possibly existed but was very narrow and unobtrusive. Okay, now we come to the wind instrument. There are treatises that talk about finger vibrato, but not so much of air vibrato. I think that doesn't mean it didn't exist. If you think that wind instruments were seen as imitating the voice on a long note, uh, it would make perfectly sense to make an air vibrato as an ornament. As for the finger vibrato, uh, we've got a lovely treatise by Otter, a French Baroque treatise that speaks about this, uh, this kind of vibrato. And we're going to talk about it in the next video, specifically on vibrato for wind instruments. As for the finger vibrato, in French this was called flattement, at least by Otter in his uh, treatise. So this is a very handy thing we can learn and we will be doing that in the next video. But for now, we're coming back to our main subject, vibrato in general, in Baroque music. So where was vibrato used? On long notes, uh, to give it some form, some color, something extra, an ornament. And with this, we've come to the end of this general discussion of vibrato in Baroque music. I hope you liked it. And if so, please give it a like, leave a comment, follow me, you know, all the stuff. <laughs> And in my next video, I will be actually doing the practical work of vibrato on the recorder. So if you've got a historical wind instrument, you can do that video with me. Well, thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.